Joining us now, Ned Davis, research senior international uh, economist Alejandra Grindal, and Main Street Research CIO James Demert. Welcome to you both. James, I'll start with you. Why did we fade the gains here? Was this the weak 30-year Treasury auction or something else? Well, you know, I think it's a number of things. Uh, and and uh, one of them is that I think investors in general have just been overly uh, optimistic uh, as we enter this seasonally weak period. And uh, the number, the print on the CPI, I just think is a reminder, yeah, you know, the Fed's done a lot of this work that needs to be done, um, but it's still a bit sticky. So that means rates uh, higher for longer. Uh, and I think the I think investors might have sort of looked at that first print and said, oh, gosh, we'll buy stock on this. And then they thought about it a little bit more. And then you look at some some other issues and data that we suggest, you know, this market is in for maybe a more of a pullback from here. So I wasn't surprised to see a big open and then sort of take it all back. That's kind of what corrections look like as you sort of roll through. And I think we're uh, just sort of a third through this one so far. Okay. Alejandra, I want to get your thoughts on CPI because there does seem to be the sense that, it, that today's reading only reinforced rather than improved the present narrative uh, of disinflation in this market. Your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the headline numbers, they were quite good. Um, those 0.2% gains that we saw both this month as well as um, the prior reading is in line if you annualize it with the 2% target. I think the worry, and I and I have to agree with James, is you know the numbers were quite good right now, but it's just a couple months. And if you look at the second half of the year, a lot of those disinflationary forces that we saw at the beginning of the of the year just may not be quite as strong. Um, you know, one is a lot of these um, you know either core services prices um, as well as even core goods prices. They may uptick a little more, like used car prices have sort of stabilized and you know may not provide as much downside. Medical care services could correct. And then the real kicker has obviously been oil prices. When we look at the August reading for CPI, that headline number is going to be higher. Now, again, it's just the headline. But as we know, if you look at consumer inflation expectations, they are greatly driven by energy prices. And that is something that the Fed is watching quite closely. So, yes, great reports. I will you know, put my hand down on that. But second half of the year, I just think those disinflationary forces are going to be a little harder to achieve. OK. James, you mentioned this is what corrections look like. You didn't say pullback. You said correction. <laughs> what are your expectations about where we go from here and what drives it? Thanks, Morgan. That's a great question. I mean, I think investors really have to be ready here um, for maybe the style of a, what I would call correction that we saw in March or the one we saw in December. You know, we're coming off some very technically overbought uh, areas over the last uh, sort of few months with the huge rally, obviously the AI stocks, and, and finally you're starting to see some more participation in the broader market. Um, however, we're really technically overbought. Yes, recent declines have sort of brought that down, but there's a lot more weight place to go before we get to what we call oversold positioning. Um, and that's usually where you really want to start to move into some of the companies that we think are attractive. Also, valuation-wise, you know, you're at 19 and a half times earnings. It certainly would be a lot prettier at 18 or, or 17 and a half. And I think uh, if you got stocks to pull back in a normal correction, which would be closer to 8 to 12 percent, uh, more than a pullback, I think it, it depends on how we look at this, um, that's a great entry point to buy some of our, some of our favorite businesses. Uh, so, of course, I'm now going to ask, what are some of your favorite businesses? <laughs> Thank you for doing so. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've been pretty sensitive about consistent growth in earnings and strong balance sheets. It's really been a wonderful uh, place to be for the, since the bear market began and, and into the last few months. And then also themes, right? You know, you really can't be an investor today and not have some AI exposure. That's a theme that's outside of, let's say, the consistency of certain sectors and earnings in sloppy economies. So, so when we think about our favorite numbers and, and companies, you know, companies like AMD in this space or Microsoft or the Amazon. But I think here also investors should be really careful to, to understand this market just recently is starting to broaden out. It's not just the, the Super 7 or what do you want to call those high, mm -hmm. big high stocks. You can now, uh, you start to see Caterpillar Tractor act well in the industrials, right? Very exciting. We think that the stock's very low PE. You know, you pick all these other sectors that frankly haven't moved a lot this year, but just till, till recently. We think this correction is going to invite investors to, to, to get up, to be part of the whole party yeah. go across. Yeah. 